everyone! Today I'm filming a video about my childhood autistic traits and I'm making this video because I have seen a lot of autistic YouTubers make a similar sort of video so I thought I'd join in. So the first childhood autistic trait that I can think of is I would be really scared of things like PE equipment, like gym equipment um, and outdoor play equipment. So in my first school we had something called a trim trail and it was a bit like a... <laughs> It wasn't a climbing frame, but it was something that was uh, made of wood and you played on. You would stand on these bits of wood and balance on them um, and jump from bit to bit and things like that. I was terrified of it. I was a very anxious kid. <laughs> um, and that's that's how I met my first friend, actually. Um, my first school friend helped me on that and that's how I met them. But um, another thing I was afraid of was hills. Um, I was afraid of hills. I'm not too sure why I'm not too, too sure if it was a sensory thing because sometimes when you uh, are in a car and someone drives over a hill it feels really weird um, or I'm not sure if it's because I was afraid of the height of the hill or something but I, I was afraid of driving of being in the car when someone was driving over a massive hill and I always wanted to go down a different road and things but a person in the car would distract me and I then wouldn't even realize that I was going over the hill that I was afraid of, so that kind of helped. <laughs> Another autistic trait I had as a child was I really didn't like change. I could not cope with change, and that's a big autism thing. Um, I remember when I was really, really young, um, maybe four, five, or six, I had a birthday banner pet up, and I screamed because I wasn't expecting it. I was so stressed that something had changed. I was so stressed that um, I had a birthday banner in the living room when I usually didn't. Um, and another time my parents bought me a TV and I screamed and that sounds like a really ungrateful child I wasn't ungrateful. I just couldn't cope with change. There is a big difference I was grateful, but I couldn't cope with change. There is a big difference <laughs> Woo! Um, When I was 12 um, this wasn't like my early childhood this one But when I was 12 um, my parents parked in a different spot outside of my school um, to pick me up and I was I was planning to walk down with my friend and I just got so stressed and angry because they parked in a different place um so i when i was younger i did not used to be able to cope with change but after the age of 13 um i, I was pretty much fine with change like now um if something different happens i it either wouldn't phase me or i would like it because i like excitement and novelty um however there are certain things that i don't want to change but that's because i'm happy as i am and I think that's something everyone has to an extent. They they don't want things they like to change. But when I was younger, it was literally anything changed. I would go off the rails. I would hate it. <laughs> Another childhood autistic trait I had was sensory issues, particularly with shoes. <laughs> shoe shopping was a nightmare. Um, <laughs> shoe shopping, I would try on so many different pairs of shoes and be like, I don't like any of them. I just didn't like it. And when I was 10 years old, I went through a phase I had some neon pink shoes that I really liked and I was wearing them all the time and even when they were stained from mud and really horrible I didn't want to get another pair and then someone in my extended family eventually had to take me shoe shopping um, because I was just like I really didn't want to change the shoes but I kind of had to. <laughs> another um, autistic trait I had when I was younger that relates to sensory processing was I hated having my hair brushed. I mean, I still kind of do, but eh, I can brush my own hair and stuff, so it's fine. But when I was younger, I had to have like a really soft bristled brush because I really, really just didn't like my hair being brushed. And I didn't like putting my head under the water to wash my hair either. I would just be really distressed about it. And that was a sensory issue as well. Just things were very uncomfortable for me that wouldn't bother other kids as much. This is probably one of my biggest autistic traits as a child. Um, when I was younger, my speech was not delayed in any way. However, I was very anxious. Um, I've said that before. I was anxious to speak. So in school, I hardly ever spoke to people that much. I would speak to friends a little bit, but very quietly. <laughs> and I never really spoke up that much. I was quite introverted. And every single school report, pretty much, from when I was younger said, Romy's very shy. <laughs> Um, and some were like, Romy's starting to come out of her shell, but basically I was just really shy. <laughs> it wasn't until I was in year four and I went on sertraline, which is an antidepressant medication, which can also reduce anxiety, 
um, hmm, I subscribed that for my OCD, but it didn't actually reduce the rituals because I had direct OCD, but I subscribed that. <laughs> And one thing that did change was, I wasn't shy anymore, I became very, very confident. And my mm, parents got a phone call from my year four teacher going, what's happened to Romy? She's speaking. And people were really surprised um, that I was speaking because apparently there were some people like, when I was younger who didn't think I could speak. And I could, I just didn't speak that much because I was too anxious to. So when I went on medication, I could be confident and I wasn't anxious about speaking anymore. So that was pretty good. But I, one... one <laughs> sort of event that really stands out from when I was younger um, was that we had these eye tests in my first school we had eye tests and hearing tests and in the eye test of course we had to read off of a board thing and I didn't I didn't read it off that much so they assumed there must be something wrong with my eyes because I wasn't reading it out and I got referred to the hospital so they could check my eyes properly and stuff like the hospital opt opticians um, and there's nothing wrong with my eyes the problem was I was too shy to read out what was on the, the board that I was supposed to read out so it was more my anxiety and communication that was a problem and not my eyes <laughs> thankfully I am not shy at all anymore I'm probably one of the most confident people I know in some ways um <laughs> which is is quite funny how that turned out I, I just don't shut up now <laughs> on the topic of the eye tests that we had at school um I was absolutely terrified of the <laughs> eye tests and the hearing tests I remember crying to <laughs> the teaching assistants being like, I don't want to have it done, I don't want to have it done, I'm terrified of it, and I was just so anxious about it, um, penis and, oh by the way, if you're watching this and you haven't seen my channel before, uh, I have ticks, so that's why I'm doing those things, um, but yeah, I was terrified and the teaching assistants were trying to calm me and, and they said, it's all done now, um, we don't have any more of these, we just have these early on and things like that, um, yeah, they, they terrified me as well. I'm pretty sure just the theme you're getting here is everything terrified me. <laughs> Another trait that I had when I was younger was magic hands. And this was stimming, but we didn't know what it was back then. I didn't know it was stimming. Um, I, I, let me see if I have a pen on me. Yes, I do. So I would, sorry, I'm getting a pen out of here. When I was writing, I'd be holding the pen, but I would always go like this. Always do that. Um, and I'd kind of move my hands in a in a unique way as well, and that was stimming. But at the time, I didn't know I was autistic. Nobody knew I was autistic. Um, beans, and one of the one of my friends in my class would just call it magic hands, which was quite quite sweet. Um, because I was known for having magic hands, because I would keep doing that. That was actually stimming. Um, and again, another autistic trait that I had when I was younger was rocking back and forth. As you can see, that did not go away. I still do that a lot. Um. In my baby videos, I was watching one of my baby videos and it was quite funny. It's in eh, the baby video you can see in the beginning of a video. I talk too fast. It's the baby video that you can see in the beginning of a video I made about um, what it's like being a young woman with autism or, or, to, or an autistic young woman. Um, penis and the video in the beginning, I, I was basically a baby listening to music, rocking back and forth with the music. It was pretty cool. But I would rock and rock back and forth quite uh, vigorously, quite passionately, um, peanut, and that's something that never really went away, um, so I've always rocked back and forth, I think, and as well as this, I also had a rocking horse when I was younger, and I would sit on that and just rock for hours and hours and be so calm, um, so that was something that was very calming for me, so I would rock back and forth a lot. Ha! Another thing that I think might have been an uh, autistic trait I had when I was a child was um, difficulty understanding facial expressions. Now, I'm an adult and I'm really good at reading other people's facial expressions. I have no problem reading other people's facial expressions. However, when I was younger, I have pictures from when I was younger and <laughs> penis, I penis, I don't think I really understood facial expressions because these pictures I have when I was younger, it looks <laughs> like I was told to smile, but I wasn't doing it naturally. Um, and I don't think that was intentional at all. I always had issues like smiling. I would smile with my bottom teeth. Um, and at, at, at the time when I was younger, I don't think I understood how to do facial expressions like most people do. So I have this one, which yeah, you can tell I'm not doing a natural face. Um, but at the time, I think that's what would happen if someone said like, oh, smile to the camera. I'd be like, not, um, not natural <laughs> in that. And then chicken nugget that's what i was speaking about with the smiling with my bottom teeth as well i would do that um 
so I don't know, ooh, I would smile at my bottom teeth all the time, so I don't know if that um, mm, difficulty like with facial expressions, actually doing the facial expressions, eh, was part of autism, but it definitely could have been. Mm. Taking things literally, um, taking things literally is a very big autism trait, um, mm, and I remember when I was 12 years old, it was really, really funny. Um, again, this isn't a young childhood trait, but um, just before I was a teenager, mm, but I probably have been, I actually, I have been literally a lot before then, but this is just one thing that I remember that really sticks out. Um, I, I remember being in my English class and my English teacher had, well, we had, what was it? Mm, I can't remember what it was. Well, I was about to say P-E-E-L paragraphs, but that wasn't quite what it was at the time. Um, P-E-E-L was point, evidence, explain and link, but that wasn't quite what it was at the time. They were saying Zoom. I think Zoom, not the video calling thing that everyone uses now, to them, Zoom was where we had to zoom in on a specific word and explain what it means to create depth in our writing or something and analyse the words um, so that I guess we could show that we understood why they were used in the text. Um, but I took it really literally. They said, um, write it as if you're writing to someone stupid and you're trying to explain what the word means. And what they meant was um, <clears throat> penis. What they meant was to analyse one word. I analysed every word in a sentence and I gave the definition of the word the, the word a, ah, um, like very <clears throat> words that probably shouldn't be analysed in, in your English work. I was literally giving a definition of every word because I took it so literally what they said. And then the teacher looked at my work and she was like, because she had said, um, <laughs> write it like you're writing to someone who's stupid. She was like, okay, not someone who's that stupid. <laughs> um, although I don't think someone's stupid if they don't understand what words mean. I mean, that could be a symptom of many things, but... That's just what happened at the time and woo, it, it was quite a funny situation how I literally gave a definition of every single word in the sentence because I thought that's just what I had to do. Um, another another thing which which um, sticks out, um, which is actually really ironic and quite funny, uh, when I was younger there was a autism documentary on CBBC, it was about an autistic girl called Rosie and her brother and it, in that documentary they said something about um autistic people see the world differently but i took it really literally because i thought seeing is literally what you see what they mean is autistic people perceive the world differently but at the time i was like well do autistic people see everything in different colors or something then i don't understand how do you see something differently do they see everything um with it with like a different color and stuff like saying autistic people see things differently doesn't make sense to autistic people because we take it too literally. So autistic people perceive things differently. And that actually makes me laugh because at that time when I was younger, I didn't know I was autistic and I was taking the autism documentary too literally, which is really funny. Hmm. The autistic trait that I had when I was younger was staring and I would um, stare at people for long periods of time because I didn't know it was socially inappropriate. Um, yeah, I do remember one time when I was in year two, there was a boy who had dribble on his face and I was staring at him for ages because I didn't understand why he had dribble on his face. I was like, why do you have dribble on your face? It's annoying me. Um, but I was staring for ages. Um, and he like said to the teacher, why is Romy staring at me? Um, and the teacher said she might have a crush on you or something. I didn't. Um, <clears throat> that's just, I, I stared at people and I still do. Um, I don't mean to, but I do still stare at people if I'm friends with something something i'm sorry i just call people or something if i'm friends with someone i will keep looking at them to make sure they don't leave um which sounds quite like i'm very clingy but i mean i kind of am so i, I would do that as well Ooh. a penis autistic trait that i had when i was fuck i had when i was younger was making friends with younger children um when i was 10 years old my best friend was like six um <clears throat> which isn't like too bad but I think an autism trait I've read is you would make friends with people who are older or younger than yourself. You might have difficulty interacting with people your own age. So when I was 10, I was friends with a six year old. Um, and now as well, I would say I'm friends with people of all ages. Now, another autism trait that I had when I was younger was um, <clears throat> difficulty running. And if you wonder why this is an autism trait, it's because some autistic people are really uncoordinated. Um, we have some sort of some people do have some sort of developmental coordination difficulty. <gasps> Woo! So when I was younger, uh, people basically say that I ran as if I had like a physical conditions with my muscles or bones or something, but I don't, <laughs> well, I didn't have a condition with my muscles or bones. I was just really uncoordinated and quite clumsy. But in cross country and everything in school where we had to run, I was pretty much always last or second to last, even until the end of secondary school, I can't run properly. 
Um, but this is different to the loss of coordination uh, in Pan's Pandas because my loss of coordination in Pan's Pandas was very different to my natural clumsiness. Like my natural my natural clumsiness is just me being a little bit aloof. Hmm. But the Pan's Pandas loss of coordination is where my arms felt like lead and jelly at the same time. I'd reach out to try and grab something here and completely miss. I wouldn't have been able to do this. I can now. Um, the Pan's Pandas loss of coordination was a bit more extreme and felt terrifying so it was a very different thing but i was just very uh, uh, like physically clumsy and physically aloof <laughs> now penis part of <laughs> part of the experience of being autistic that some people have is masking masking is where you kind of try and act neurotypical you might copy other people's behaviors in order penis to try and seem neurotypical but this kind of happens subconsciously it's not like you wake up one day like i'm going to try and act like i'm not autistic because it often happens before you know you're autistic penis so <clears throat> masking as i said is like where you pick up stuff of others and i noticed this immensely chicken nugget in my childhood i would just pick up stuff of others and i would copy others um and there are some things some traits that i actually have that you could ask me sometimes like where did you get that trait from and i could say the person who i pigeoned it magpied it from and like got it from Woohoo, chicken nugget um but yeah there were some funny situations with this when i was really young though that i remember um i remember eh, seeing people in the lunch hall in my first school when i was like four years old i was just adjusting to being in school and i didn't understand how i was supposed to interact in school um and there was food all over the floor and i assumed that because there's food on the floor people must have thrown it there um so i thought that if you don't want your lunch just throw it on the floor so that's what I did. I sat there, ripped my lunch off, uh, ripped my lunch up, and threw it on the floor. Mm, chicken nugget, uh, and and the lunch lady wasn't very impressed. Um, but I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I, but it wasn't obviously. Um, but it wasn't obvious to me at the time. Um, another another thing is when I was around the same age, I was four. I saw some kids playing around a football goalpost, um, and I was like, well, I I'm going to copy them. I'm going to playing the football goalpost but I ended up getting my ankle tied in it so that all my classmates were then lining up to go in back into the school and mm, chicken nugget and then I was like being told by the teacher you need to come over here you need to line up with everyone else I was like I can't I'm stuck and then the teacher had to come and untie me and free me from the uh, football goalpost that's pretty much like a definition of the stuff I do I just do a lot of weird things accidentally Woo, spinach um penis in terms of the general traits that i pick up of others one big thing that stands out to me there is when i was 12 a lot of this stuff i remember is from when i was 12 but when i was 12 um i was diagnosed uh, as autistic when i was 12 by the way so a lot of this was when i was learning about autism and uh, unmasking Woo i wasn't becoming more autistic and i wasn't purposely acting purposefully acting more autistic but once we really find out that we're autistic sometimes we seem as if we're acting or becoming more autistic but it's actually that i was kind of unmasking but i i remember a thing when i was 12 which I, i'm not really sure what this was really but as i said i was picking up traits of others and eh, i was watching um what well, i think it was tracy beaker and i think there was a girl <clears throat> in it who had cerebral palsy and she like she smiled with one side of her face but then I started doing it and I always smile with one side of my face um, because I think I picked it up off there and <clears throat> I, I didn't know how not to do it. I just picked it up from seeing it and I could not not do it like that because I'd learnt that from what I'd seen. <laughs> the situation with me taking things literally was <clears throat> sometimes when playing a game I would get a little bit too absorbed. <laughs> and this was one time when I was four years old, I chickened it. <laughs> <laughs> One time when I was four years old, um, I was with a girl eh, who just walked past. I was on the trim chair with friends and we were playing a game where we had to attack the crocodiles. And I was way too absorbed in the game. Um, <clears throat> penis. And the girl walked past and I was like, crocodile. And I bit her until she bled. And then I had to sit outside the head teacher's office. Logically, I knew she wasn't a crocodile, but I was too absorbed in the game. that I was following the rules of the game and not the rules of the school or reality. So I ended up really injuring her. Um, and getting into a lot of trouble. So the autistic trait I had was uh, my obsession, my obsession with schools. And I say that obsession really big because I still kind of have it to an extent. I've had it most of my life. Mm, penis head. But um, <clears throat> with that obsession, I would design schools. I would draw out schools. I would draw out school uniforms. <gasps> mm, 
<clears throat> I would penis. I would um like want to play schools all the time. I would if I was playing imaginatively with others, it would be a school game. If I was playing with my toys, it would be a school game. And that will lead me on to my next point, and I will explain that soon. Um, but everything to me was about schools. And there was one point when I was 12 where I really wanted to go out wear, like wearing um, like a school blazer and like a school dress um, that was different from my normal school uniform. Uh, just because I thought it was cool, but most people wouldn't think that's cool. Um, but yeah, I, I had an obsession with schools, which is really interesting. Um, because this this is kind of off topic, but it's something that my OCD also picked. Almost, he would tell people where to stand, and a big part of that was because that's the sort of thing that happened in school. You were told to line up, you were told what to do, you were told where to stand, and I would do that because it was part of my OCD. But it was also like you have to do this. That that was my 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 special interest was kind of schools but it also played into the OCD stuff as well I would order people about along and be angry if they didn't do what I needed them to do um but anyway yeah hey chicken my school obsession was quite big and I remember when I was 12 why is everything when I was 12 when I was 12 I did <laughs> when I was 12 I did a presentation to my <laughs> class in school we had an assignment to make a presentation about a school design and I was so excited um, and it went really well. I got a postcard from the teacher saying that it was really good and everything, which is really nice because I worked really hard on it um, because it's my passion and like I, that was the one thing I loved more than anything else. And I do still design schools to an extent. Um, hey, if I'm really bored, I do still do that. Hey, school uniforms, not so much, but I also remember I was so happy when I was younger because I found a um, online game where, hey, penis, I could design school uniforms there's literally an online game for that so i was so happy and i spent so much time on that uh anyway that that's enough about my tangent about schools i did also have other special interests a big one was the simpsons and again hmm, interests are typical but special interests are like obsessive really intense passions that you need to pursue um another one for me was the simpsons and my family would joke about like i should go on a quiz show where they ask questions about the simpsons because i probably know all the answers and stuff like that um i had uh, the Simpsons cuddly toys, the Simpsons poster, and so many Simpsons um, episodes and things. <laughs> For like m many, many years I've been collecting Simpsons DVDs and I've got a lot here. These aren't all Simpsons, but most of these are Simpsons DVDs. I mean, yeah, I don't know if you can see almost all of these are Simpsons DVDs and there's quite a lot of them because I was collecting them for years, it was my special interest. So there you go. I had, when I was younger, um, that looked like an autistic trait, but may not have been an autistic trait, uh, was I did have really bad meltdowns. I would, um, I think I would like scream and get violent and stuff like that at a young age. But meltdowns are thought to be <clears throat> associated with overwhelm <clears throat> and maybe doing too much, being stressed um since we overload thing, things like that and it did look like autistic meltdowns i was having however they were triggered by food dyes um mm, it was found when i was three years old that i was sensitive to food dyes and when we eliminated food dyes i did not have those attacks anymore until i was older hey i went into a major pans pandas flare and then started eating food dyes again because i was going out with my friends and eating sweets um but that's another story that i think i've probably told before um, but yeah, the, I did have meltdowns, but they, they actually probably weren't quite meltdowns because they were triggered by something I was eating and, and not sensory input. Um, there have been quite a few, <laughs> my serious um, look, there have been quite a few um, studies on how food dyes impact hyperactivity. Um, but it's important to note that the reaction from food dyes can be a delayed one. So for me, it was six hours after consumption. Um, but yeah, anyway. That's my tangent about food dies over. Where was I? <laughs> Information on a specific topic. Now you can probably guess it was schools. Uh, there was a website called, well there still is, schools web directory and they have lists of schools um, from all over England, all over the UK. And I would spend ages on that just looking at all the school websites, noting down, uh, thinking about the schools. I was just so, so excited by schools and that sounds really weird. I know it does. But I, I was collecting information on that because I, I, at the time I was really passionate about it. There's also another website called Brain Facts and I was looking at that because I became interested in neurological conditions, probably because I have neurological conditions. Um, and I became interested in that and was 
learning about various different neurological conditions like um, then there was another website which i forgot what it's called that was listing um genetic rare genetic disorders and i was just researching that as well and learning about lots of different rare genetic conditions because i was really passionate about that um and these aren't typical things again i was, I was mm, how old was i at this time probably like mm, 12 <laughs> i mean is that why i just pepper everything um i think i was probably about 12 or uh, also younger and older i had it when i was a teenager as well as a teenager i would still look at those school websites and the the brain facts website and stuff like that so it actually went on for quite a while into my teenage years as well but that isn't like a typical thing you'd think a teenager or um or or kid would be doing like looking these stuff up and and being very excited by the genetic disorders or the schools it's yeah that's a very autistic thing <laughs> I also said that I seemed very autistic in the way I played with toys. I would line up my toys always, and this is why I said I was going to get two. I would always line up my toys and just tap them, and I'd get really excited just lining up my toys and tapping them. That's a very autistic way of playing. However, I think there was a misconception in this because I feel like people thought that I was lacking imagination because I was mm, penis. I was lining up toys and just tapping them. That doesn't look very imaginative. However, I think I was more imaginative than most people because I was playing the same game every time. Okay, maybe I wasn't that imaginative. I was playing the same game every time. I was The reason I was lining up toys is they were lining up for school. It was my school obsession again. I was lining up the toys because they were all going to school and when you're in school, you have to line up. So that's why I was lining them up. And the reason I was tapping is because hmm, that was a stim. And when I stim, I kind of get immersed in my mind. I fantasize, I imagine a daydream. And I was daydreaming about what all these characters were doing in the school and stuff and what was happening so in that way i think in a way i was kind of more imaginative than most kids because most kids would have to actually move the figures and go blah 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 and actually they would maybe speak as they're playing but i didn't do that i did it all in my head so in that way it's a bit more imaginative than most people rather than me lacking imagination hmm. other things as well um i think it looked like i had a fas fascination with spinning objects um again that's a very autistic thing but it wasn't the spinning that fascinated me, it's because I would spin things and then imagine they're on like a merry-go-round or a fairground ride and stuff. Um, so pretty much all the time when I looked like I wasn't playing imaginatively, I was actually being really imaginative and people didn't realise that, but I was. And the reason I would stim so much from playing is because I was getting so excited and immersed in this fantasy that other people couldn't see or understand.